Hello there all you beautiful people and welcome to this gameplay video of Deep Sky Derelict's Definitive Edition. My name is Dan and as always I'm here to show you those indie game gems that you might have missed but I think it's worth for you to check out. So today I'm giving you some original combination of turn-based strategy and RPG enriched with tactical card combat and roguelike elements. The developers are Snowhound Games and publisher 1C Entertainment. So if you get excited about exploring derelict alien ships, fight, loot and upgrade your gear all set in a comic book aesthetic style then this is the game for you. So let's jump into some gameplay and I'll tell you more about it. Alright so here we have the rat bastards. That's our team that we can re-roll if we want to. But they have weaponry tech, medical scavenging, and mental capabilities. Two of them are neurotic, and one is actually crafty. And as you can see, we also have normal difficulty and hardcore. But since it's our first time playing, perhaps we should stick to the normal one. And see what happens next. Exciting times. Here we go. Welcome scavenger. I've been expecting you. Now I don't need to tell you that the world is unjust. You must know it better than most. Being an aristocrat myself, I can only imagine the hardships you stateless must endure. That's why I'm offering you a possibility to leave that brutal life behind. Really? What is this offer? I want you to find the fabled mothership and secure it. It's a reward. I offer you full galactical citizenship. The mothership is just a myth. Well, I'm listening. Our scientist has discovered that the mothership is hidden somewhere in this sector. We have strong reasons to assume that it is filled with technological wonders beyond belief. Find it and I will grant you citizenship. Needless to say, you could be rewarded with a one-way ticket to an easy life on a comfortable and beautiful mirror world. Sounds too good to be true. Why me? And how am I supposed to find it? I heard that you're experienced. Fast dialogue. Start looking for leads, get into the bridge section of each derelict you go to and try to find something that could contain useful information. Anything that hasn't been corrupted by the millennia, those ships have drifted in space. Not every derelict necessarily provides the needed information, but with enough data, research can put together. I can do that. Where to start? Consider getting some contracts from the lair to help you keep Expeditions profitable and head to shuttle bay to depart. Well, we have to check out. How about my team? Does the offer concern them too? Yes, your entire team is granted with the same privilege should you find the mothership. Tell me more about contracts. Uh, all sorts of people have developed an interest in the derelicts. They offer contracts for scavengers to perform various assignments. Completing them will grant you credits. And credits, of course, will help you sustain yourself. As the sub-governor, my job is not to keep track of the contractors. Check the lair if you want to know more. I heard enough. Report back to me as soon as you find any information about the mothership. Prove yourself worth and I will grant you a broader working permit. If you manage to find and secure the mothership, the citizenship is yours. But bear in mind that you just want the own, you're not the only one I offered this. So, this is our space shuttle station. Where we prepare for our missions and get right into it. Of course, we will dive deeper into all these different locations. Uh, but let's so let's do a quick glance of the PDA before we go out scavenging. We have our levels, as you can see. We also have our cards here. Uh, the crew inventory. We have our weapons, tools, and shields. And the shield core. And different. Some have close combat weapons, some have not. Like this one has a level 1 assault rifle, and this is a power glove. And of course, here we can see our missions. Nothing exciting or weird about that. Oh, it's supposed to work. As you can see, the cards. Uh, 
but we get them from different items we actually equip. But let's see here. I will tell you more about that also. Uh, we can fly to Chesnevik. It's 12.2 uh, light years away and water and cookies are included. But it's a max of two cookies per passenger. So let's go perhaps for the first one, the level one. So we will see how this looks. Okay, here we are. Return here and contact me when you're ready to go back to the base. Be safe out there, guys. Okay, check your PDA so we know where we're going. Uh, all right, this caught me off guard first. The map starts a bit off where you are from. So it's hard to start the scanning, as you can see. I'm pretty lost. Nothing there, nothing there. That's our energy. Scan surroundings. And scan a certain position. Okay. So, keyboard. There you go. We never get around through the PDA, and here we have handle all our movement scans. And if we need to refill our energy, that is also good. And while I move around here a little bit, let's talk about a bit more about the background story. As the intro so nicely explained to us, we are the poor, stateless class, a bit like the outcasts. We live out scraps from the derelict alien stations and ships while we dream of becoming a privileged citizen. In movie terms, it's a little bit like Alita Battle Angel mixed with Elysium. If you have, but if you have any other good movie reference for this type of story, please comment below, comment below in the comment section. Our squad, as we so carefully handpicked at the beginning of the game, joins us as we explore derelict ships for loot and clues. If we want to switch out our scavengers, we can do it later on in the lair. I will show you that one also, but the question is, what will this team actually think of me if, if I would switch them out? But here we are, have our first combat. So here we go, look at that graphic. So we take turns, of course, and the Ancient Eye got to go first because we are kind to our elderlies. The graphic novel look of the of the action phase of the turn are looks fantastic. Some enemies have both armor and health. These one have it as you can see. So we have to deplete them all before we actually win. Pretty standard as you can see, but you can also see our energy uh, go down every time we do an attack. So if we move around too much and don't have enough energy to fight, I'm guessing it's gonna go south pretty fast. So the Ancient Eye is up next. It hit pretty hard though. But you just wait. We have single strike, we can give each other compliments and that is nice nowadays. You look good. Uh, and let's see, let's just shoot. It was actually a blade. Now it's the heavy hitter. Here we can draw extra cards, max shields, or we'll do this one actually attacks two targets. Oh, so they're still alive. So then we have the does 90% damage, applies minus 5 to, five to initiative. That is one good uppercut. So, come on little one. It can do, can an eye do a headbutt? Maybe it does. That should end it. Uh, but I cannot calculate, obviously. Just draw cards and defense cards, okay. Then we use this one till we can... We're running out of cards. There we go. That was easy, right? So, we won our first fight and we got some loot and 
let's talk about a bit more about this version with the two DLCs. I can admit I have not played this game before this release, so for me everything is new. But New Prospects is one DLC and well, the DLC Station Life is the second expansion. And it's more of turning the station, our home and safe haven into a scavenging operation. What I want to show you here also is that you can meet up with some f pretty funny figures actually. Uh, where sometimes it's better to skip or avoid than give the wrong answer because this one as it's red drains us of all our energy so we are now on zero. So we just fail with the quiz master and that will now lead us to a Hail Mary because every time we move we drain our scavenger's health. So how do we survive? We do it. As you can see they're slowly slowly dying. So let's try, we can't go there or not there, but we can actually don't do anything except landing on this one. So here we are saved and as you can see uh, we can trade and lucky for us they actually have power cells and these power generators that you can place on the ground to help us out and give more energy. Besides the regular enemies, we also have this, what the sub-governor so carefully explains some rival scavengers to fight. These are a bit tougher to fight, but they come with a great reward, so let's give them a run for their money actually. And while we do that, we can also talk a little bit more of what the DLC brings. You can, for instance, take your old junk to the crafting workshop and make old equipment into newer ones. I will show you a little bit more about that. And these random station encounters also with rival scavenger crews, as you can see now. And we can bargain with shady dealers, as we met before. So let's see what we really need to do here. We give them a heavy strike. And it's Blake's turn, so we do... Uh, inspire could be nice. So what's up next? Blasting charge. Yep, do that one. I like those that can actually target two enemies at the same time. But we're running low on energy though. So let's give them all we have. We also have a buffer of 400 energy. If we are fully energized. Let's see here. Dirty punch, burst fire. Bash. 112% damage to that one gives 8. So let's see. It's a. Mm, mostly motivational cards. But that's good for the other ones. And this one applies burn. That's hurt, I guess. Mark a blast. Oh, right in the groin area. That must hurt. So as you can see we are going for a steady win. Because we have so many cards to play. So let's see. Should be an easy win. And as the game progresses you into this one. I look at this now. Look at all this loot. Oh my god. Okay, so you have seen me fight and you've seen the dairy so let's check out the other stuff in the base here is the pawn shop where you can buy uh, cores weapons energy cells that you need and you can buy them here and you can see i'm a little short of funds but still it's a good place to go to if you want to level up your scavengers and there's also these Pacifier, for instance. But if you go to the cell tab, if you have a lot of junk, they have a nifty, nifty little button here you can just press and you will uh, sell 
uh, all the junk at the same time so you don't have to sell them one by one. That's good. So let's see what's up next. Station Hall. Hello, Governor. Hello, Scavenger. How goes your search? Mm, yes. How well have we progressed so far? This is the place you go to from time to time to just tell them what you're doing. The data from the Shestevnik derelict was already taken. Uh, Gagnas, you say. We heard of her and this troop. A, a mercenary? Doesn't matter. You have more opportunities to find the data we need. Is it anything else? No. Nope. We don't need the sub-governor for anything more. I love this. It says leave as a talking point. Next up is the lair. Our lair is the place to go if you need some extra quests to do or to switch up your team of scavengers if you feel rich. But here you can read about what you need to do. They want janitor robots and this one wants five wormling intestines. I don't know what the vermin is yet, but I've probably seen one and shot one. So let's take that one. But yeah, here you see the mercenaries for hire. And they cost a bit, around 1000 credits or more. So with my 561, I can't really... Unless I can sell my crew, but I don't think I get money for them. I don't think so, at least. Next up is the research workshop. The name might give it away, but you go here to upgrade all the good stuff. Like scan range, for instance, scan details, scan durations, energy upgrades, energy cost reduction and restoration. You can get some crafting upgrades. Let's see, an energy reserve one. Uh, crafting is efficient proce procedures. Two rerolls for each one. Enhanced crafting. We can change the implants. Increase the maximum number of implants in a crew member by one. That is good. Uh, advanced. Unlock advanced implants in the medical facility. Oh, that's nice. Bigger inventory. Still haven't got my inventory full. And of course, this one. Uh, if you find uh, weapons like this, you can disassemble them. Disassemble them. Fancy word. And then you can get different nodes for your weapons that you can create. And these ones, in turn, give you more cards to play with and fight enemies. So, your super awesome scavengers get hurt and you need some, and they need some TLC from time to time. So then it's time to visit this place. You can give them different healing items, but you can also distribute your points. But first, like into this one, we can give them surgery, and that will heal them up nicely. And this one needs surgery too, and some painkillers for that one, and we are done. On the advanced tab, here we find all the good stuff. Uh, we can insert implants, like an ag aggression enhancer that gives 50% melee damage, minus 15 to hit. Uh, we have weapon denoter, t plus 10 in weapon aid. That always seems like a good thing. Aim assist. For all you control players on PS4 and Xbox, perhaps. But yeah, basically we can give them that one and we can redistribute all the ability points if we like. But that's no fun. And then we can customize. And now we can pimp them out to look even more fab and exciting, you see here. That is the most important stuff for our scavengers you know to look good when we meet the enemy head on I'm trying to find the matching colors here a little grayer bluer with a good looking hat perhaps would be fab and next one is the prophet 
the one with the big glove. Oh, that looks like a decent one. So, now they all are good looking and are healed, so now we can leave this. There is actually one game mode I haven't talked about yet, besides the story mode, and this is this one. It's called Arena. This one lets you drop right into the action without the main story at all. You just meet up with these ones and fight your way through. And it's a bit tougher from the get-go, you can see here. There's a lot of these and they hit you pretty hard. And I managed actually to do this pretty thing just a couple of seconds later and that is to actually lose my <laughs> first scavenger in the first fight. Good for me, right? So, I've shown you some sweet gameplay, I've shown you the base you get to live on, and now we come to the part where we talk a little bit more about my impressions of the game. First off, the comic book art style of the game, and especially the action part, looks so good. It can run on a pretty low-end i3 with 4GB of RAM, so no need for that extreme fancy gaming setup. It's playable on Windows, Mac and Linux, so they cater to the full lineup. And with a definitive edition packed with the two DLCs, you can also now play it on the Switch. Which is fantastic, since I think the game shines where you can chill in your sofa with the Switch and your pet sleeping carefully beside you and a glass of your favorite beverage. It's a nice game that really shines with the encounters and the ones you meet out on the spaceships. As always, it's been a pleasure showing you this game and if you like my content, how about you hit that subscribe button and if you want to leave feedback about this video, then head on over to the comment section. I'm Dan and until next time, stay awesome!